the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Sunday, October 25th, 2020. SpaceX is partnering with Microsoft Azure, which is the same platform that ASM runs on in the cloud, to uh, provide internet services and also to do hosting at some point. So I've reached out to my friend at SpaceX to ask if we can be part of that space cloud beta program. The Department of Justice sues Google. This is going to be the biggest legal case in the history of the world. Watch. The reason being that this is all dealing with the unaccountable internet, I would call it. Uh, things out there like chat rooms, forums and such, where anonymous information is propagated without any accountability. All of this is coming up before the courts. You're going to see lots of challenges. Um, I make no claims about how long it's going to take to resolve, but I guarantee you this is going to be a very big deal and go on for a long time. There are going to be more state and federal challenges or state versus federal power challenges than you've seen in the last 50 years, if not longer. The reason being uh, the election, the current election situation. Um, these state federal challenges will have some bearing on, you know, the legality of sports gambling and things like that. So this is something to keep an eye on. I'm noticing that the story coverage, the the news coverage of the gambling industry right now is starting to hedge uh, towards explaining why the U.S.-based sports books are not making money. In fact, they're spending more in promotional dollars than they're receiving back by quite a large margin. Uh, mention this because in Costa Rica many years ago, 20 years ago, one of the things we discussed as an advantage for the offshore operators was that they would always be free of tax or very little tax or and or reporting requirements for government purposes and that these would be permanent advantages in the in the offshore world i i now see that becoming true in the numbers so you have players that are much more established you know online gambling operators offshore that are much more established have basically 25 years experience on you and they have the permanent advantage of not paying tax almost in all cases, especially with like the Costa Rican books and the experience uh, of 25 years or 20, 25 years of experience and uh, reporting anonymous, you know, being able to gamble anonymously. So these things are not going to go away. Uh, this is a permanent issue and it is going to make it very difficult for U.S. operators to be profitable here. And in fact, we talked about this Ace brought this up specifically long ago, uh, not in the Costa Rican period, but in this period, that the U.S. operators were going to have very, very stiff competition from the from the British bookmakers because they have the longest experience, uh, and then the offshore books. So that's now bearing out in the numbers, and you're going to see that as the reporting season comes and DraftKings reports their non-earnings for the third quarter, which will be... My bet is it's going to be, be even worse than the previous ones. They're in a real spending spree now. So um, I'm going to hold an Ask Me Anything uh, um, session on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, which is hosted on the sportsvote.com. Again, the sportsvote.com. I'm going to put that up in the next few days, uh, the reservation there. Just feel free to join. If you're, um, if you're interested, I'll just answer questions live from the uh from from the channel november it's going to be sunday november 1st 2020 at 2 p.m pacific 5 p.m eastern 2 p.m pacific 5 p.m eastern on the sportsvote.com sunday november 1st 2020 2 p.m pacific 5 p.m eastern dot net um the dot net extension the sportsvote.net is the online petition Please sign that and pass it around if you can, if you want to help us out. And then the sportsvote.org is the uh, the archive site that contains all of the um, 
the history documents going back more than 10 years. It has discussion forums and such uh, there where you can discuss with us and between you know yourselves about everything that we're doing here. China grew uh, in the third quarter. The China's economy grew in the third quarter. That's uh, very substantial because that's not happening anywhere else. So China's come out of this first, basically. Uh, Quibi, I don't know if that's the way that's pronounced, uh, blew through almost $2 billion and looks like about six months. Uh, I thought it was a year. I'm, you know, it's almost a certainty this is a result of the pandemic, uh, you know, accelerating it. But still, to, to, I mean, it's just mind boggling to me how an entity can burn through $2,000 million, almost $2,000 million in six months. I mean, how, how is this possible? I look at the same thing with, you know, even like DraftKings. I mean, th these companies are not making any money, whether they float their stock in the, in the exchanges or not is irrelevant. The bottom line is that as an operational entity, they're not profitable. So is all of this just looting the public? Is that what all of this is? I mean, I really wonder. So one MDB scandal, uh, I won't go into the details of that here, but it's a really, it's just a terrible example of the lack of ethics and honesty in, in the business and the financial markets uh, I would say in I would say in general, but I mean, if you want to uh, draw it to a specific case, this is a pretty ugly mess uh, in terms of uh, just bad behavior and and lack of responsibility and ethics, basically knowing right from wrong. I mean, if you want to get to the simplest form, um, political power through sports. So I, I'm going to extend on this over over time, but it has been my belief pretty much from about 2006 or so, that one of the ways for the global public to increase their personal political power would be through, um, through this, through, through sports trading and find, you know, the sports markets and all that brings, because it's going to bring a, a higher awareness of how things work in the, in the world in general, because eking out profits in, in the, Markets gets harder as they get thicker. So there, there's quite a bit more to this, but but at the core of it all, behind just creating, um, you know, education through sports finance, through sports markets, and economic opportunity through sports markets, also political power through sports markets. So I, I will be explaining that more uh, in the coming weeks and months. The Iowa election markets is a, an interesting comparison. If you want to look at a long-running test market, you know, not every new financial idea that gets put out is instantly turned into a commercial operation, you know, as evidenced by our fits and starts along the way. Uh, you know, creating something that's never existed before is bumpy. And, you know, to this day, um, if you look at how long that, that site's been up, you'll see you know, they still have limits. They still have a lot of restrictions. Uh, and it's been, if my memory serves correctly, it's over 20 years that it's been alive. So finally, I'm trying to keep these segments under under 10 minutes. So um, in the next segment, I'm going to mention a, a piece of the story from Costa Rica uh, where I can really remember. Uh, I mean, there's no other way to put it. I almost felt like I, I could hear my heart beating when it really hit me what ASM was, what it could do, and really how big the gap was uh, between the top and the bottom. Basically, of all the time that I had spent in Costa Rica, I really didn't fully understand how difficult it is in the world to survive. I guess I would I would put it like this. I didn't understand how difficult it was to survive and, because it's really not something I had ever considered. I mean, I really had never considered that. And how little resources it takes to change someone's life in about half the world. I, I mean, I remember that moment. I was driving with my family through, um, actually through the jungle, quite literally, to the coast. Um in Costa Rica, and I can remember having a conversation uh, with with my former wife about 
everything. And, and when she said something to me, um, which I will explain the next, um, what that was in the next segment, when, when she explained it to me, I can remember hearing myself breathe. And, and that's when it really got me that we had something here that could really, really uh, change the world and in a very positive way. So thank you for your time and stay safe with your friends and your family. And I will release the next episode uh, soon. Bye now.